Hey guys, what's up? It's the boy Speedy Door, and today we're going to try a little bit something different. This it was a video that I made on my old channel, and I thought it'd be better to repurpose it and um, change a few things around and uh, cut some stuff out that like copyright claimed and whatnot. Just have it up here in instead of the old channel. This is the film Legacy of Frankenstein. Uh, I made this back about like two or three years ago i thought it was it, it was a good video i thought i i made some good points and it was nicely edited and whatnot so i just wanted to put it up put the video up here dead so yeah enjoy i think that mary shelley's frankenstein is one of the best stories ever told her story about a man trying to play god is a timeless classic throughout the years there have been f many films about frankenstein however we are going to look at three versions of the film. The Edison Studio 1910 version, the Universal Classic 1931 and the 1994 version. In this video essay we will be looking at all three versions and seeing where they fall in line with the novel. Not only that, but we will be talking about some certain aspects that the film added on. So, without further ado, let us talk about the Elson Studio version of 1910. The 60-minute short film was the first adaptation of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein novel. It is a small miracle that this even exists to modern day. Almost 75% of all silent films are lost. The people who are cast and crew of this film have been dead for some time and yet this film exists when you take that into consideration and it's over 100 years i do not know how this is found but i'm happy it still exists however the Edison studio version has somewhat nothing to do with mary shelley's novel that being the case it is quite hard to see this film next to the superior version of 1931 version or the 1994 version i feel it's a disservice to put the edison version up on that pedestal but it's still a very very good interpretation of mary shelley's novel the honest thing in this film is the creation of the monster. In Mary Shelley's novel, the monster is made up of parts of the dead, sewn together with evil intentions, a creation of man. However, in this version, the monster is made by chemistry, birthed by a giant pot and locked in some sort of furnace. But the oddest thing in this film is the monster's design. The monster's design looks very similar to the 1922 version of The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Quasimodo was played by the man with a thousand faces long chain. The monster in this film kind of looks like Quasimodo. However, it is not creepy enough to be scary. One of the best scenes in the film is at the end. Dr. Frankenstein is chasing down the monster which broke into his house. Dr. Frankenstein is standing at a mirror and the doctor turns into the monster and then turns back. All in all, the Edison version is a very, very interesting thing to watch and it's still a small miracle that this even exists. Now, Next is the legendary 1931's Universal Studio version. The film was directed by James Whale and adapted from the play, adapted from Mary Shelley's novel. Already this film is well ahead of the Elston Studio version. We see Dr. Frankenstein stealing bodies and getting ready for to create the monster that um, is so iconic and so legendary. With the Elston version, there was no real reason why he was doing what he was doing. He just kind of said, Oh, I want to create a monster. I want to create a human being. But there was no real catalyst for it. This Dr. Frankenstein, however, has one thing and one thing only on his mind. To play God. When the monster comes alive, Dr. Frankenstein screams out, In the name of 
of God. Now I know what it feels like to be God. Oh. One of the best images throughout the whole film is the amazing makeup of Jack Pierce worn by the legendary Boris Karloff. Everything that we think of when we think of Frankenstein through our pop culture, it was all, it comes all the way back to Jack Pierce. From the shape of the head to the bows on the neck, everything about this is textbook iconic. Some actors are remembered for a certain role. Sean Connery as 007, Clint Eastwood as Dirty Harry, and Arnold Schwarzenegger as the Terminator. Boris Karloff is the monster and his legendary performance. This film is very iconic, however it was a riff for Universal because films were changing nearly every day with sound needed and new lighting techniques needed and new cameras and new makeup techniques. Frankenstein 1931 is an absolute classic. It's held up great by its amazing cinematography and its set design. Frankenstein 1931 is a horror masterpiece. Next is the 1994 version. Between 1931 and 1994, the whole film world changed. Movies got bigger and better throughout the passing decades. Film went from black and white to colour and we see a lot of changes in horror films as well throughout the decade. From the cheesy B movies of the 50s and 60s to the rise of Hammer films in the 70s. Films were not just for entertainment anymore. <laughs> they were a key role in, in storytelling tools until the rise of video games in the mid 80s. To give its full title, Mary Shea's Frankenstein, there is a reason why her name is added in. In 1992, two years before Mary Shelley's Frankenstein came out, Bram Stoker's Dracula, directed by Franz Ford Coppola, came out. There was a resurgence to film very close to Bram Stoker's work, adding nothing that seemed out of the ordinary. I busied myself to think of a story which would speak to the mysterious fears of our nature and awaken thrilling horror. One to make the reader dread to look around, to curdle the blood and quicken the beatings of the heart. Mary Shelley's Frankenstein sticks very closely to the book. It's not a page for page retelling of the book, but it is using the story very well. The film opens up like the book with a boat crashing somewhere up north. They find Dr. Frankenstein in the middle of nowhere, running away from the monster. This is how the book opens and it's a very nice change of pace. Usually they have some sort of Frankenstein getting the bodies and that's a really nice touch that they stuck very closely to the book. The cinematography in this is very good the first time. The set design is probably the best part of the film. Grand staircases and big mansion house. The film looks very really nice. However, there are a few problems with the film. One of the major ones is who plays the monster. Robert De Niro plays the monster. Now, I'm not saying that Robert De Niro isn't a good actor. Far from it. He's been involved in films like Goodfellas, Taxi Driver, Raging Bull and Heat. However, Robert De Niro has one of these faces that you instantly recognise and no amount of makeup can hide the fact that he's Robert De Niro. People would have said, oh hey look, it's Robert De Niro playing the monster. But that being said, he does a very good job of making the monster seem sympathetic. Just another creation of man that has been scary. Oh no, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein 1994 is a really nice change from the 1931 Universal Studios version. Takes the book and shows on screen. The film really does what it says in the thing. All three Frankenstein films that I have talked about in this video essay have been great movies in their own right. 
However, it's the 1994 version that sticks very closely to the book and it does a very good job of, of putting the book on the screen. However, that is not my personal favourite. My personal favourite one is the 1931 Universal Studio version because everything that we know about Frankenstein comes from that, as I said before. And the Essen Studio version is so incredibly weird that I think everybody should watch it and wonder how we can actually see this film in 2017. It's insane. There's always going to be Frankenstein films. In fact, as, I'm, as I was writing this video essay, I picked up the newest version, Victor Frankenstein, from 2015. However, why I picked the Essen Studio version and the Universal version and the 1994 version is because all three of them shape Frankenstein and every single one has made a mark somewhat on film history. So I hope you enjoyed that retrospective of three Frankenstein films. I'll see you soon. Thank you very much for watching and listening.